Okay, so today um, we'll be going over uh, the P5 uh, science exam booklet, so booklet A and B. Okay, so starting with section A. So Ahmed observed a living thing in the garden and recorded the following. So it has legs, it has no scales and has no feathers. So we're gonna think what animal group does a living thing belong to? So these are the groups and I just like you to imagine them. So for now I've put images on the screen. So a fish, we can see it has scales whereas this has no scales, so it can't be a fish. Birds have feathers and this has no feathers so it can't be a bird. If you think about reptiles, for example, snake, they have scales, whereas this has no scale, so it can't be a reptile either. And lastly, amphibians, for example, frog, has legs, it has no scales, and it has no feathers. This would be number four. Um, in which of the following body systems does the lung belong to? So let's think about the function of each of these systems. So the digestive system helps with eating, the muscular system helps with movement, the circulatory system is involved in blood vessels, and the respiratory system is involved in breathing and the lungs help us breathe. So it's number four. Okay, let's look at the diagram. So we have fruit, we have the seeds, and we have the you know, outer casing of the fruit. So um, J and K are formed from a flower. So let's look at this diagram of a flower. You don't have to focus on you know, all the labels, but we know that the fruit and the seeds come from the ovary and the ovule, so that's correct. The fruit is developed from the ovary, that is correct. And for option C, K helps to disperse J, which are the seeds, by being waterproof. Well, if we think about dispersing J, we want it to, the seeds to spread out and we don't then want them to be trapped. And so K being waterproof, it doesn't really affect that. So the answer is A and B, so one. Let's look at the diagram. So which of the following statements that the unborn baby is correct. So it does not need food at this stage. Well, we know that's not correct because if it's going to grow, it needs food and it depends on its mother for nutrients. Well, that's correct because so by the umbilical cord and the, and the surrounding tissues, it gets its nutrients because how else is it gonna get its nutrients? Number three, it develops inside the mother's stomach. Well, as, even though it looks like it's in the mother's stomach, it's actually in her uterus, so that's not correct. And number four, it gets its genetic information only from its mother. Well, that's not true because if we think about even ourselves, we have certain genetics that are from our mom and from our dad. So the answer is number two. Okay, this diagram shows a flowering plant. Based on the diagram, which of the following shows the correct direction of the movement of food and water at part Z? So, okay, I've just drawn a little plant. So we can see the roots underneath the soil and we can see that the water is moving from the roots and that's going up. And the roots down here, they need food. And where is the food being produced? Up here in the leaves. So, so the at the top, it needs water, and at the bottom and the top, it needs food. So the direction of food is up and down, and water is going only up. The answer is two. Okay, Paul carried out an experiment. He placed a plant with white flowers into a beaker of blue-colored water. And after a day, he cut a cross-section of the stem and observed its food-carrying and water-carrying tubes. Okay, so let's just draw this is the water, the dyed water moving up. Let's just look at a little, um, you know, imagine that these are the food, this is the food tube and this is the water tube. So the food tube, because it's not going to take in water, let's imagine it's being like blocked off. Whereas the water and it's being, you know, it has um, blue dye in it, that's gonna travel up. So the food, are the food carrying tubes going to be affected? No only the water carrying tubes and the white flowers are also going to turn blue because the water is being carried up into the flower. The option is, the answer is two. The diagram below shows a boy blowing air into a balloon. How are the amounts of carbon dioxide or oxygen and water vapor different from the surrounding air? Okay, so where are we getting, let's think about the gases. So when we breathe out, we're breathing out carbon dioxide and also water vapor. Whereas what we're breathing in 
is oxygen, but this oxygen is going into us and we're blowing out CO2. So there's not that much oxygen in the balloon. Whereas we do have a lot of carbon dioxide, we do have a lot of water vapor, but we don't have that much oxygen. So that's three. Okay, James did the following activities one after the other. First, he jogged for 10 minutes, then he sat down and rested for 10 minutes, and finally he read a book for 10 minutes, which the graph shows his heart rate over the 30 minutes. Okay, so let's look at some of the graphs. I'm gonna start with three because if you have z if your heart rate is zero beats per minute. Hi, sorry, I can't really talk right now. Hi. I'm good, thank you. Um, so if you had heart rate of zero beats per minute, you wouldn't um, survive. So that's not correct. And that's the same thing with the first graph. His heart rate cannot end at zero. Okay, next we look at the second graph. So his heart rate increases in the first 10 minutes. That's true. But his heart rate between 10 and 20 minutes when he's supposed to be resting, his heart rate is maintained at a high rate. So that's not true. So it can't be option two. And then we look at the fourth graph. Um, and so his heart rate increases during his exercise. And then when he's sitting down and resting, it's slowly decreasing. And in the final 10 minutes here, his heart rate is where it started when he's not exercising. So the answer is number four. Okay, which of the following statements about the animal is not true? So this is, a, you know, a, a, a tortoise. So the cells on its shell have a cell wall. Well, no, because only plant cells have a cell wall and this is not a plant cell. The cells in the animal have cytoplasm. Um, yes, they do. The cytoplasm contains is where a lot of the chemical reactions will take place. It has cells that carry out different functions. Yes, that's true. Because it's a complex organism, it needs cells that can do different things. The cells of the adult animal is larger than the cells of its young. No, it's not necessarily that they're larger, it's that they have more cells as you get older. So the ones that are not true are A and D. So the option, the answer is one. A leaf of a plant was placed in a beaker of hot water. It was observed that air bubbles formed only on the upper surface of the leaf. Which of the following conclusions is correct? Okay, so let's think about what are these air bubbles? That's oxygen. So if we look at option one, Air escapes through the openings found on both surfaces of the leaf. Well, no, that's not true because then we'd see bubbles on the lower surface as well, whereas we only see them on the upper surface. The hot water evaporated and formed bubbles on the upper surface. No, because we're not thinking about water evaporating, we're thinking about uh, oxygen being produced. Number three, the leaf has openings on the upper surface but not on the lower surface. Well, that would make sense because we only see bubbles on the upper surface. So, so far, three is correct. But when you're doing your exams, I want you to go through the options and make sure that you've eliminated them all. Number four, air enters the lower surface of the leaf and escapes to the upper surface. No, because if it had openings on the lower surface, then you'd see bubbles there as well. So the answer is number three. Okay, 11. Study the diagram of a single cell organism which of the following shows the functions of the labeled parts. So let's look at what the labeled parts are. So F is on the very outside, and because it's a chloroplast, we can say this is a plant cell. Um, so F is a cell wall, and if we think about the function of the cell wall, that's strong and solid, and it's gonna give it, um, if because it's solid and strong, it can support the cell. G is inside, so this is cell membrane. And we like to think about membrane being involved in the movement of things in and out of the cell. So you can remember M for M. And lastly, H is the nucleus. So now let's look at which of these um, rows this aligns with. So we've said the cell wall supports the cell, so it's two or three. And the cell membrane is controlling the movement of substances in and out of the cell, and the nucleus is controlling the activity of the cell. The answer is three. Okay, number 12. The bar graph shows the number of days each stage of the life cycles of insect X and Y last. 
Based on the graph, which of the following is correct? Number one, insect Y lays more eggs than insect X. Well, they haven't given us any information about the number of eggs laid, so that's not correct. Insect X and Y have a life cycle with three stages. Although they've shown three stages, we don't know if there are more stages, so we can't say that this is correct. The egg of insect X takes six days to hatch into a larva. Okay, so insect X is this light colored bar. So after six days, it's hatched into a larva. So this one seems correct. But let's go into the fourth one. On the 13th day after the egg is laid, insect Y is at its pupa stage. So this one is a little bit tricky because it seems like if you look at day after, um, it says 12 and then you have the pupa stage. So you might think that this is correct. However, after the egg is laid, there is 10 days here and then 12 days in its larva stage. So actually, it's 20, if I had said on the 23rd day, then this would be correct. But the answer is number three. An experiment was conducted using four identical tubes. All tubes were placed in a brightly lit room. After a few hours, a few drops of liquid X was added into each tube. And when liquid X was added, the color of the water changed according to the amount of carbon dioxide as shown below. Okay, so let's look at what's in these test tubes. So you have a snail and you've got a plant. So the snail is going to be respiring more and releasing CO2, whereas a plant is going to be taking in more CO2. And now let's look at the options. Water in tube A was red, yes, because that's normal. Only the water in B turned yellow. Okay, so for the water to turn yellow, there would be more carbon dioxide. And yes, the snail is releasing carbon dioxide. However, it's not only the water in B that will turn yellow, as we'll see. Because the plant, for example, in D, is still respiring and it's still releasing the CO2. So we can't say that only the water in B turned yellow. Number two, the water in C turned purple as the plant made food. So when we talk about the plant making food, we're talking about photosynthesis. And the plant is going to take in carbon dioxide in order to do this. So yes, that would be true. So, so far, two is correct. Number three, water in B turned yellow as a snail took in water. Well, it doesn't really matter if it's taking in water, that's not going to, we're talking about carbon dioxide, not water. So number three is not true. Number four, only the water snail giving gives out carbon dioxide, turning the water in D yellow. Well, no, because the plant is still respiring and the plant is also releasing CO2. So the correct answer is two. The diagram shows a shoe, and let's think about which material is most suitable for making the heel. Let me think about, so this is a broken heel, it's not doing its function. So we can see that it's bent and it's not very strong. So we want it to be waterproof, yes. We don't want it to be flexible because we don't want it to be bending, and we want it to be strong. So the answer is two. This one is a bit more like common sense, like just think about in your life, what is the what kind of qualities you want in the heel of your shoe. A sheet of material T was placed on top of a piece of paper with words printed on it. It was observed that the words could no longer be seen. So let's imagine we have a piece of paper with some words and then we have material T on top. So material T allows light to pass through. Well, that's not true because if it did, then we would be able to see words on the bottom. So number one is not true. Material T does not allow light to pass through. Well, that would make sense because if we can't, if material T is stopping light from passing through, then we can't see what's written underneath. Number three, the piece of paper allows some light to pass through. The piece of paper is at the bottom, so it's not really, um, that doesn't really affect whether we can see or not because we have material T on top of it. And that's the same for number four. We're not talking about the piece of paper on the bottom.